So in the last video I went through how we get to this point. We do some change of variables and we get to this form, which is still a transcendental equation, but now that we can solve. Now remember, this was our even symmetry solutions, which have odd values of n. We can do the same for the other class of solutions, which were the odd symmetry solutions with an even value of n. So we get to a different transcendental equation. So remember that. So how do we tackle this? We are trying to find the z values which satisfy this equation. Think back to the basic like, use of an equal sign. It's true when the left side equals the right side. Just start with that. So what does the right side look like? That is the equation for a circle with this radius. Okay, so think about this as we're basically trying to make um, a, a circle, this is your radius. And so we get, I've probably done a terrible job of actually making this circular, but we get a circle, okay? So this is going to be that part. So z is on my horizontal axis. This really just is one parameter, but we can think about saying, what if this was y equals square root of this uh, z naught squared minus c squared? Again, circle, so we have that function. Now we're going to plot this again as a function of z. And what we're looking for are the intersection points. Where are these two things equal for the same parameter of z? Same parameter of z would be same point on the x-axis, the horizontal axis. And if they're intersecting, that means they have the same x value, so the same value of z, and the same y value. Well, it's kind of like we're saying you know, this equals y, this equals y. So if these two y values match, then they really are equal to each other. So that's the idea of finding um, the intersection points graphically. There's again, not really a nice mathematical way to just do this with pen and pencil. Again, some calculators might be able to find the intersection points for you, um, but otherwise you're literally just trying to find a way to do this graphically. So now here's where it's a little bit tricky. To find all of the allowed energies, remember these are our n values that are odd, these are our n values of even, we would need to plot both of these, and they have slightly different shapes. Okay, so first we would be finding n equals 1, that would be coming from this one, so z tan z. So z tan z um, would start at 0, and then you get some function that comes up, cool, there's an intersection point. So you then ask the question, Okay, we get this value. What is its x value, right? Uh, so x is, is a bad way of saying that. What is this z1? So you find that intersection point and you're interested in the z value. This then is, is your z1 and you go back up here and you get e1 from knowing what z1 is. So that gives you e1. Now the second thing we need to do then is actually come over here to get z2. And z2 is going to have a different functional form and it's going to look a little bit different. And okay, maybe it looks something like that. So again, we drop this down and we get z2, which comes from e2. And remember that this one is actually now coming from over there. Right, so, so this functional form came from here to get z1, use your n equals odd version, for z2 here. Okay, so then we go back, we're getting another, we're going to plot our next function. It looks something like this. I'm really just kind of guessing the shape. These are complicated shapes. So then again, we drop this down. We get uh, z3, giving us e3. And again, that came from the z tan z. Okay, next we plot this one again, and we maybe find this point. So we get z4. Now, one thing that's a little bit tricky here, you go, okay, z4. You plot your next one and it's out here. There's no intersection point. What that means is that these are your allowed energies. And I said that before, for the finite well, once you go above a certain energy, i.e. v naught, you're not in the well anymore, it's a free particle. We haven't studied yet what that means. It does mean something. It's still an allowed particle, but you're no longer in the well. Those boundary conditions don't actually apply anymore. 
So, so please note that depending on what your Z dot value is, you are going to get different numbers of allowed energies. I happen to draw four here. Kind of the downside to that is the example in the book is also four. Um, but the bigger that Z naught is, the more allowed energies there are. And this is nice. This should make sense to you. What does Z naught depend on? Well, in particular, the depth of the well. V naught kind of is telling you how far up the well goes. <coughs> so the deeper the well goes, the more allowed energies you would expect. Now that would be for the same particle and for the cell same well width. You also then can see if I haven't changed the width of the well at all, if my particle is more massive, I have more allowed energies. If I don't change my depth of the well and I make my well wider, I have more allowed energies. Can you make the well so small that there's in fact no intersection points? Well, look at where that function starts. Since this first function starts at 0, 0, there's always going to be one, one intersection point. So you're always going to have one uh, allowed bound state if we think about it from this graphical point of view. So how might you use this graphical technique? Again, I'm drawing it here and just labeling it. That's cute, but not a thing. Um, so one of the things that I frequently do, I actually like using the Google interface for plotting. On the Google command line, you can plot things. You could go to Wolfram Alpha and plot things. Um, this is not something that I would ask you to do on a test because it's not something I can, I really expect you to be able to do just by hand. And again, once you look at the plot, you can either pick out the intersection point, you can maybe ask the program to give you one, or you can just kind of zoom in by hand. Is this something you can do on a plot in Excel? I don't know. I don't know why anyone would do that, Lord. Um, so consider using Wolfram Alpha or Google. Again, a calculator would be fine if on your calculator you can either get what that intersection point is or you can zoom in enough and just estimate it. Again, your goal is to get that Z1 value. Three or four sig figs should be more than sufficient. You really don't need 10 because then you're turning around and calculating your allowed energy from it. And remember that you have to use both of these to get all of your allowed energies. So I hope that makes sense.